Here's how to install memory seats in your car. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the seat from the car by removing four 14 millimeter bolts. Remove the seat from the car. This is the key to my project. It's a chair from a Lexus ES300. And I know the color is not exactly the same as my car, but I'm just gonna be using this for testing purposes. It will bolt right up to the car. The frame rails are exactly the same. Since this chair doesn't have a heater, I'm gonna be taking it apart and transferring my heater pads over from my other chair. So here I've got the seat cushion removed just so you can see how everything works. I've got different motors for sliding, as well as reclining, and front tilt, and rear tilt. Now if you look closely, you'll see on every shaft that there's an encoder that feeds back to this computer. And this computer knows what position the seat is in. So for example, if I set this current position and then move the chair and then I press 1 again it will automatically go back to that exact position. We're going to first start by flipping it over and loosening the seat bottom and then the seat back. To get the chair bottom off we're going to need to remove the computer as well as all the wiring harnesses. There are four 12 millimeter bolts that hold the seat cushion on. I'm going to go ahead and remove them. So I've got the computer as well as all the wiring loose and the bottom of the seat cushion. I can go ahead and turn the chair right side it up and remove the seat back. This is the reclining arm. I'm going to remove this 10 millimeter bolt and the chair will be free to move back and forth. Just like that. Next there's two 12 millimeter bolts in here that need to be removed that the chair pivots on. With all the bolts free I can lift off the seat back. So here's the chair back from the Lexus. To add the seat heater I'm going to need to remove the leather covering from the chair. So to do that we're going to start at the back there are six clips that hold this back panel on, two at the top which are easy to get off, two on the sides which are really hard to get off, and then just two clips at the bottom. So we're going to start by gently prying up at the front, and then you really got to get in here with a screwdriver to try to disengage this clip, and then we're going to pull it away this way and it will come off. Don't forget the wiring harness for the lumbar support before you remove the top of the seat. At the back of the chair there's a few hog rings that I've already removed and then I can fold back the leather. To remove the headrest mount I'm going to go in from the bottom, squeeze on the tab and push it out. So I've got the leather pulled up on the chair back. I'm just going to come in here and remove the set of hog rings in the middle. So now that I've got the leather pushed back I'm just going to go ahead and install the heating pad. One thing I noticed on the Toyota seat is the leather is not as soft and as padded as the one on the Lexus seat. Next I'm going to start closing up the leather by replacing the hog ring. Next I'm going to deinstall the seat. Next I'm going to remove the pan from the leather bottom. And we're just going to go around and undo the clip and then I can remove the pan. So here I've got the seat bottom. I'm just going to pull back the leather and undo a few hog rings. Now that the leather cover is pulled back, I'm going to install the heater pad. Then I'm going to go ahead and replace the hog ring. One of the differences between the Toyota seat and the Lexus seat is the fact that the Toyota one uses springs which make it a bit stiffer compared to the Lexus seat that just fills this area in with sponge making it a lot more comfortable. Next I'm going to reinstall the pan bottom. This is the little seat position control unit that sits under the seat and controls the memory seats. This is what it looks on the inside. There's a bunch of relays on this side that control the motors as well as some diodes and logic gates and there's a little beeper in here. Now I'm going to install the seat cushion. Don't forget to reinstall the lumbar support wire. And I'm going to replace the chair back. Next I'm going to replace the two 12 millimeter pivot bolts that hold the chair back onto the seat frame. Next I'm going to replace this 10 millimeter bolt that holds this recliner arm to the chair. Next I'm going to go ahead and replace the four 12 millimeter bolts that hold the seat cushion on. Next I'm going to replace the seat position control unit and then go ahead and replace all the wiring harness. So now comes the fun part which is the wiring. The seat controller under the seat is just asking for switched inputs. I'm just going to wire everything to power so it's always working regardless if the car is on or off. I've got a female connector here from my car which will plug right in and this is my positive wire and this is my negative wire so I'm just going to wire this up. Looking at the wiring diagram for the memory seats we've got the white and red wire as well as the black and red wire that will go through the ECU these are going to be power 12 volts always on then we've got the red and green wire that goes to the door switch that allows the memory functions to work when the door is open we don't need that so I'm going to leave that disconnected. Then we've got the green and white wire here that goes to the stoplight switch and then it goes to the taillight failure sensor so that also needs to be grounded. Over here on the second page we've got a green and white wire that goes to the park neutral switch that tells the seat that the car is in park and it can operate the memory functions and that goes to a switch 10 amp fuse. I'm going to ignore this and wire this to 12 volts. 
and down at the bottom here I've got a brown wire that goes to ground. Finally on the last page we've got our blue and white wire as well as the black and white wire that's your 12 volts and ground respectively. According to the wiring diagram the white wire and brown wire is your ground and the green wire comes from the stoplight switch which also needs to be grounded so I'm going to tie those together to the ground wire on my connection. Next I'm going to tie the red and yellow wires together which is your seat belt light wire. The blue wire here is power. These other two wires with red stripes here come from the ECU which also gets power and the green wire here is from the park neutral sensor that tells the seat that the car is in park and therefore can operate the memory function. So I'm just going to tie all of that to the blue power on my car. This red wire with a green stripe I'm going to leave disconnected. It goes to the door switch. So here's my electrical connection, the seat belt, the positive and the negative. It's not too permanent but again it's just for testing. So this is the finished seat ready to be put in the car. So here we've got the seat installed in the car. As you can see the color doesn't match but this is just a prototype. I've got everything connected to the frame rail properly and the wiring harness plugged right into the car. Just to demonstrate how position memory works, let's say I set my current setting and somebody else comes in and moves the chair a little bit forward or reclines it a little bit or plays with the tilt. You can then come in and press number one and the chair will go back to the original position. Like that.